So July 1st is when um, the new regulations um, kick in for data collection from WIOA, and I'll talk very briefly about that, um, about the, the quarterly reporting requirements that are brand new, something we didn't have in the past, um, about data sharing, and then a little bit about e-tests and, and where we've come um, now that we're supporting HTML5. So this, this is the slides that I'll be covering. So first is barriers to employment. We'll look at what those are in a moment. Um, those actually are not so new because we knew about them a year ago and we've already put those into Tops Pro Enterprise. So they've been there for a year actually. Um, well, on the other hand, we have eligible training providers, which is less than two months old. So <laughs> um, the feds brought out the Pearl, which is a participant individual record layout last year and then they just finished the round of comments on it, I think at the very end of April, they sent those back to us. And it was at the end of April that they introduced the eligible training providers and about eight more new fields. So if you thought we had a year to prepare you know, TE for the new data elements, we've had about less than two months <laughs> to finish it off. And it's still not exactly final because these, the Pearl and these other um, reporting um, Results and so on are not final in the sense that they have to be approved by OMB. And I think June 30th is our deadline to finalize these things. And whether they make that deadline or not, we'll see. But we had to keep moving forward regardless so that you would be ready if you're using TOPS Pro Enterprise when the program year starts. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Um, and not yet published are the NRS table revisions. We assume there's going to be some revisions. We don't know for sure. And they haven't been published. So that's wait and see. So this is what I was talking about that we've already had in Tops Pro Enterprise for a year. And the goal here that the feds are wanting is to, is to see if we're really serving those who are most in need. So that's the purpose of collecting this. And our reports will have to start showing how we're serving those who are most in need. So we didn't used to have cultural barriers. Some of these we did have. We had disabled and disabled homemaker, but we didn't necessarily have low income and long-term unemployed and migrant farm workers. So, there's a new mixture um, that we're collecting, and, and what's also going to be new is that we're going to report on each of these, which is sort of something we didn't do in the past. In education, there's, there's more that we're collecting than we have. Um, what's new is um, skills progression, just because there's going to be more um, measuring skill gains from other assessments that you may not have scores for, but you have to indicate in other ways. Transcript or report card is something new. Transitions is new. This is obviously one of the themes of, of WIOA. Um, there's a lot more um, gradation in, in skills and licensure and certifications and so on. So the educational results field has, has grown quite a bit. Work hasn't changed a lot. Um, increased wages is something that's new. Um, I think maybe entered apprenticeship is something new. But otherwise, this is pretty similar to what we've seen in the past for work results. What's really new, and, and I don't think a lot of, of, of any of us have absorbed all these requirements yet, is what we have to do for quarterly reporting. So with under WIA, we only reported once at the end of the year, and those were the NRS tables. This is not the NRS tables. These are all things that are new, and they're, and they're quarterly. Um, so it's, it's a rather long list. It gets into employment. Um, rate and median earnings and credential attainment rate and so on. So um, we're, we're gearing up for this, but this is also something that's still being clarified as it comes to us from, from the feds. <clears throat> this is a sample. I just took one of the reports. So this is common, per, common performance reporting. So all the titles have to do this. So in the past, it was only Title II that had to do um, literacy, skills, measurement, but now all the titles do. And, and now adult ed is also involved in um, collecting career services and training services, which is something we didn't do so much, but maybe the community colleges were doing. So there's more of these common um, data elements that we're sharing across the titles that are responsible, we're all responsible for. So this is the top of this report, and the next slide is the bottom. So you can see on, on the rows, these are pretty familiar. We, we, we've had these for a long time from NRS. We have gender and age and ethnicity breakout. But what's new are now we have employment rate in the second and fourth quarter after exit. We have median earnings, credential rate, and measurable skill gains all being reported on this report. And of course, you know, the first two, three, or four columns 
will likely need a data match in order to attain this. So one of the things that Topps Pro Enterprise you know, is prepared for is exchanging that data for the data match. <clears throat> and then what's new in our technology is um, HTML5. If you were here last year, we were already talking about that. Um, Microsoft made a great product called Silverlight. And for people who are developing in it, it's just the interface that, that Microsoft chose for the future. This was four or five years ago. And then Apple came out and first said that you know, they wouldn't work with Flash. And then um, they, they, Apple came on board to the new um, World Wide Web Consortium protocol, which was HTML5. And it was just an amazing event in that Apple and Microsoft and Google and all, all the big tech companies agreed that really we should have a common protocol on the web. And it should be HTML5. So that was a really hard thing for all of us who, who had Microsoft products already developed. Um, and Silverlight is a plug-in. That was the one downside, is that it was a plug-in to the browser. And the other thing that you know, customers are asking for these days is, you know, we, and your IT you know, people at your schools are telling this too, is um, they don't, you don't want to be responsible for hosting, for keeping the data um, locally, for having to do installations across your district and all those sorts of things. Just run your software in the browser. And so that's, that's what we're learning to do and where we are already doing. Um, and what we were able to take away now is the plug-in. So the plug-in was Silverlight. That was a requirement. But that goes away July 1st. And now it's um, any browser. So you can be using Internet Explorer or Chrome or um, Safari and so on. And you don't have to have Silverlight. And there's some other advantages, which we'll show in the next slide. Okay. So we've always been compatible, obviously, with Windows-based computers. But now we can be compatible with Apple-based computers. And better yet, um, with Chromebooks and I iPads. That's what we hear most from schools in the last couple years, is they purchase these things. And they write to us and say, well, are you compatible with Chromebooks and iPads? And we weren't, um, and that was due to Silverlight. But now that we've converted to HTML5, we, we have this ability now. So we're already piloting in Chromebook, and we'll be piloting an iPad in July. And that gives us the ability to also move into tablets, and, and these are also working on touch screens. So there's a lot of exciting things that we can do now with uh, HTML5 compatibility. This is a little bit hard to see. Sorry, sorry about that. It needs some, some more grid lines here. But this is a, a page from eTest. We, we made a number of changes in eTest when we went to HTML5. And one of them is to give you more flexibility in the data you collect. So you can use eTest not only for administering your tests online, but you can also collect demographic and program information so that you're not having to do it on answer sheets, so you're not having to manually enter. You know, why not have the students do it if you know, they're capable, if they're at a high enough level that they can do that? And what we've done that's new is let you decide exactly which fields you want to collect. So if you want to collect zip code, um, Washington, D.C. has ward, um, birth date, now we have added email address, cell phone. All these things can be specified, and you can move it over and say, this is what I want to collect. But we want to go a bit further. And uh, that's something we'll be working on this summer, which is um, having a, a data collection tool that students can access. So you have this, this one option already, which is to use eTest to collect data in a group setting, usually when you administer a test. But why not let students you know, put some of the registration information directly into TE? And they wouldn't be accessing TE. What it would be is, is a web page. Just imagine a blank web page. And then you decide some particular fields that you want there. You want to collect their gender and their date of birth and, and their highest diploma, for example then why not let them log in you know, on their own phone or um, in one of the computers in your school, whichever you, you, you decide. And that would help you with your, your data collection. Um, so that's the kind of things that we're hearing about. And we'd like a little more feedback. If you're interested in that, especially talk to me or write me an email. I think my contact information is, is in the um, program. Or if not in the program, it's in the slides. <laughs> Um, how does TOPS Pro help local, state and local and state administrators? We report all the WIA Title II performance indicators, obviously. We have data, data edit checks to ensure that the PERL is accurate and complete. I talked about the PERL. That was a document that 
the Fed's put out to tell us, you know, which data elements have to be able to exchange across all the titles, one, two, three, and four. So in the past, you were only worried about what goes in the NRS tables. Now you also need to think about data that you're sharing with your partners and through co-enrollment. And so we have data edit checks to tell you that it's complete and it's accurate. Um, you'll need to track transition to post-secondary education and work. All the data is, is aggregated and disaggregated, which obviously is, is necessary. Um, it's auditable down to the student level. If you happen to come to any of my Top Strong Enterprise um, sessions, you'll see how you can go to a report and if it's, let's just say it's a Fed table report, every cell has a number in it which you can click on, go down to the students that comprise that cell, click again on any particular student, and you can see the actual data for that student. So it's a very quick and easy way to find how your reports are comprised from your disaggregated data. Skills performance can be compared at all levels and uh, enables a data match for quarterly wages. Those are just some of the features that program administrators might like. Uh, just a reminder that Topsro Enterprise um, is compatible with all NRS approved tests. Costas, Best, ta Gain, Tabe, actually it should also be the Massachusetts uh, um, mathematics test. And obviously we have the high school equivalency test, the GED, the high set, and the task. And that's it. So these are the sessions where I have the, my executive overview, which is really good if you just want to get a full introduction to Tops Pro. We cover all the areas. Um, look for A3 and C3. Then I have one session tomorrow just about data collection related to WIOA. That's B12. And then my TOPS Pro user Q&A. That's really if you have um, any colleagues here who are using TE on a day-to-day -day basis and they want to drill down to really deep questions. This is where you would want to send them. It's their one opportunity to talk to you know, the technicians at CASAS that really know about those things and can answer their questions directly.